6.30, April 8th, to call this meeting to order. Call roll, please. Judy Borey. Here. Samuel Graves. Here. Pam Krauss. Here. Vivian Reiske. Here. Vera Walters. Here. Lori Wine. Here. Pam Harrison. Here. And I'm here. Stancy Brown. All present. Okay, you had a chance to check the agenda? Yes. 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 I hear a motion to accept the agenda or any questions? I make a motion we accept the agenda. <laughs> Thank you. Do I second it. <laughs> we have a vote. Uh, Judy Borey? Uh, yes. Samuel Graves? Yes. Pam Kraus? Yes. Vivian Reiske? Yes. Vera Walters? Yes. Lori Wine? Yes. Motion passes. Thanks. Agenda is accepted. Uh, has everyone had a chance to read the minutes from January 14th? Mm -hmm. Yes. Nomination to accept those. I move we accept the minutes from January 14th. And I'll second that. Have a vote, please. Judy Borey? Yes. Samuel Graves? Yes. Pam Kraus? Yes. Vivian Reiske? Yes. Vera Walters? Yes. Lori Wine? Yes. Motion passes. <clears throat> Okay, minutes of January 14th are accepted. Call to the public. Appears to be not a. <laughs> do we have any correspondence or communication? Yes, I do. Uh, I have received communication from the city clerk that Jeff Barlett has resigned from the Library Board of Trustees effective March 12th, 2021. His term would have expired on, excuse me, October 31st, 2022. Uh, I just want to say we're grateful for the time that he gave to the board, and he will be um, on a future agenda item tonight. Any further communication? Okay, uh, librarian's report. Okay. So I'm just going to give you a couple updates from the last month about the library. In last month's report, I told you about the new study room that is at the library. It is located um, just to the side of the circulation desk. It was a room that originally housed the creation zone. And the creation zone is our room that has a 3D printer, the digi digitization station and some other technologies. We've moved that to another room that actually has more space and we have created a very uh, private and reservable study room. So this is a picture of it. It actually has six chairs in it now. Um, we have not advertised this study room at all since it uh, started at the end of February and we've already had over 50 reservations for it. <coughs> so it's very uh, popular for those that know about it, and <laughs> now after tonight, more will know about it. <laughs> Do you have tutors or anyone there, or they can just come in as a group and study? Or? The way it works, um, they have to reserve it, so they can reserve it when they come into the library, or they can reserve it uh, through our website um, remotely. Um, if they do it remotely, they do have to have a library card. If they come into the library, we can um, override that requirement. But it can be for tutors. It can be for somebody that just needs a, a quiet room to study in. Um, we do it for two hours initially, up to two hours. And then after that, um, they need to um, extend it on an hour per hour basis based on uh, availability. So it's been working out really well. And, um, We've got a lot of good response from it. How did those 50 reservations hear about it? <laughs> well, we posted a sign on the door that said this room is now reservable and how to go ahead and reserve it. Um, probably some word of mouth. Um, I, I think that must be the only ways, unless other staff have told uh, customers when they come up to the desk about it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Is it listed on the calendar? It is not listed on the calendar. Um, I wanted to hold off on really promoting it um, for a little bit until um, 
because of the COVID restrictions and so forth, you know, um, we do disinfect it after each reservation, um, but it's just extra um, staff uh, responsibility to make sure that that room is cleaned. Mm -hmm. um, so we were just kind of letting it go for now to see how, how it would go. I don't want it to get too nuts <laughs> at first. So it is the only room in the library that you can reserve. So I assume once the word gets out that it could become, you know, a little bit more of a fight to get a reservation, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the mobile library. <clears throat> the bookmobile is now known as the mobile library. We wanted to have a name that was more indicative of the fact that we don't have just books on there. This is a picture of them at the first Friday event last Friday. Um, you can see they're assisting a couple uh, customers outside. We have a Wi-Fi hotspot on the truck so that anyone in the parking lot there at First Fridays can have free Wi-Fi while they're there. So that was really nice. Um, we have gone to the first, uh, the last two First Friday events here in Apache Junction, and between those two visits, we uh, between those two visits to the event, we have had 39 people come up to the mobile library, and we've issued six new library cards and also renewed um, some library cards for existing patrons. So it's been um, fun for the staff. They like to drive the truck and, <laughs> and park it and, and meet people. Um, if you haven't been to First Friday, it's on the corner of Phelps and Apache Trail. And uh, this last Friday I did show up and I took this picture and it was a little bit on the warm side, so I don't know if they're gonna continue it next month or not. Um, but they had the um, Mustang Club there with all of their um, all of their cars and paws and claws and some food truck vendors. So it was a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, just to talk about something that was mentioned about the mobile library last month, um, I told you about a pilot project that we're doing in partnership with the Arizona State Library and the Arizona Department of Education, where they um, approached us to. Um, do this pilot project where we would have a LTE box or a digital antenna on our bookmobile and they would pay for it for us for the first couple of months until the fiscal year um, turns in July 1. Um, we graciously accepted. Um, unfortunately, we haven't received the antenna yet. Um, I've reached out to the State Library once and they told me it was supposed to be in last week and I still haven't received it. So as soon as we have that, um, we'll have a permanent source of wi free Wi-Fi from the um, bookmobile when we're out at events. And that also frees up a hotspot that we can check out to our patrons. So we look forward to doing that. Mm. Our next piece of business is talking about a grant that we have applied for. It's an LSTA grant. Um, with the Arizona State Library. We submitted the grant in partnership with the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, for the past year, we've been talking about trying to get a story walk in one of the parks in the city. Um, after working with Liz Lang and Bach, we decided that Prospector Park would be the best fit mm -hmm. for what we were looking to do. So on your screen, you can see a picture of what um, a story walk frame looks like. What, if we receive this grant, which we'll find out May 5th, we will get 18 of these metal frames and posts that can be installed at Prospector Park. Um, we wrote the grant so that we um, were talking about the partnership with Parks and Rec and how um, we're trying to loop together um, kids going out and exercising in the park, doing things with the family. And also th by doing that, they'll see the stories that are in these frames. And at the end, it's going to offer them to come to the library to get a free book or um, a free pass to the, um, the pool that Apache Junction Parks and Rec runs. Mm -hmm. So it's a way that we're trying to increase literacy skills, also promote physical activities, um, the Parks Department would be the ones um, installing it, and they would also be the ones maintaining it in terms of 
um, if, if anything gets damaged to the posts or the frames. And the library would be responsible for trading out the stories quarterly, at least quarterly. Um, and that requires um, getting permissions from the authors and publishers to um, display the book, mm. and then we have to dismantle it and laminate it and put it inside the frames. Um, so we are hoping that we get this grant, and hopefully I will have news about that next month. Yeah. That's Sounds great. great. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds so weird. Sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah, I have a question on that, Ben. So is each frame like a different page of the book? Correct. Just Correct. It's, um, the, most picture books are 32 pages. Um, so each frame would have, when you open a picture book, it has two pictures, two pages. It would have two pages in each frame. And then we got a couple extra, um, asked for a couple extra frames and posts so that we could have um, the beginning of the book, like the title, and also have something at the end to connect them to come <coughs> to the library when they were done. Um, so, um, go ahead. To help with the licensing and stuff, have you thought about possibly reaching out to like local authors? Um, so it gives them kind of a way to publicize themselves, mm -hmm. but then you won't have to necessarily pay a more higher up author or publisher to dismantle their books? I haven't thought about it, but I love the idea. Okay. Um, most, most authors or publishers will allow you to do it for free. They just have to give you their permission. So we're not anticipating any cost. Um, Coolidge Public Library has a story walk, and um, in talking with them, they haven't had any issues thus far, and they've had it for a couple years to get the books. Um, but I love the idea of the local authors, um, and that could even tie into an event at the library where we could have the author come in or an illustrator to do a to do a program. We've done that in the past and it's been really fun. Awesome. <clears throat> so is there an age that this is geared to? Well, since it's a picture book, it's 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 going to be geared for, you know, the younger kids, but some picture books are written for elementary school kids like up to age 10. Um, but we really want it to be a, a family event. So it'll be in the park on a trail where people can have their strollers and, you know, if they want to go out there for a picnic lunch, they could go through and read the story. Um, some of the books you can get um, might have activities that they can do between the posts. So it might say, hop on one foot from, to the, until you get to the next page or something like that. So <laughs> it could be kind of a, a fun little activity. Thank you. Anything else about story walk? Great. It's adorable. <laughs> yeah, I love yes, he's so cute. Uh, let's see. Let's do the monthly report. I wish I had brought last month's report so I could show you a side by side. Um, but I can tell you that this month, or, or the past month, March, um, we did check out or circulate more material than we did the month before. Approximately, it was between two and 3,000 more materials. Um, and additionally, our statistics for visits also went up. And I attribute that to a couple of things. March, we had spring break weeks for the schools, and we did see an uptick in families and, and younger folks coming into the library, which was great to see that again. Um, the other being that more people are getting vaccinated and probably feel more comfortable coming out to the library. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were up a couple, two to 3,000, both in circulation um, of materials as well as patron visits. Um, the rest of the information is pretty much the same, except you'll see that our program list was slightly longer in March because of the fact that we had spring break. Um, Am I missing? Yeah, you're missing. Uh, I'm missing the stats, aren't I? The yeah, so what we'll do is I'll send you guys a new report that shows the side-by-side -side numbers from last month to this month. Okay. And then that'll also have the number of the people attending. So we have been using our large programming room for our largest programs so that we can encourage the social distancing and the wearing of masks. Um, and we've been trying to put our smaller programs into the Enchanted Forest, which is the story time room, or into another room. 
uh, taxes is going to be finishing up this week, so that'll also give us another room either for programming or um, to use as a, a study space. Uh, I'll keep scrolling through here. Yeah, you can see that that's a, yeah, this is just the number of programs, not the number of people that attended. So we'll get you those numbers after tonight. Are there any questions about? I got one question about the movie night. I know this month you're not showing it on the schedule. And I know that the park and recs do their movie. Is there any way we could combine with them and do something in the parking lot to kind of help each other? In which parking lot? The one between your two buildings, between the multi-gen and the that's a nice deep one. If you put something on the hill, then maybe you could add another movie. Because those things, there were a lot of people would just go to those, so that way we could maybe help promote too. They have theirs at the, what, the rodeo ground? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what days are those on? I forget. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I can know talk to Jamie over at Parks and Rec and see. Because I don't know of any new schedule put out yet. I right. Um, yeah, it would definitely have to be in the evenings when it's cooler for this time of the year. Yeah. But it's a good idea. It's a, are you thinking the, the back part of the parking lot where ours come together? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because then you can kind of limit where people are at, and it's easy because there's a nice circle in and out of people. Because if you're on the hill, mm -hmm. the little thing up there, everybody can see it. Okay. And it's fun. All right. You always have great ideas, Pam. <laughs> That's like at all your events. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were you were you were probably those. Uh, what would we have? Four movie nights last month, and, and I don't know what the total number was, but you were probably at least three quarters of them. <laughs> that was my mo eating out with my kid night, so it's cheap and easy. No, I know. It's great. I was so glad to see you every Thursday. So I'm glad Nevea likes it. So, Okay. And lastly, for librarian's report, oh, actually two more things. Um, let me just close this for now. Um, we have subscribed to a new library software application. It's called Collection HQ, and it's a product that's put out by Baker and Taylor, who is our major um, materials vendor for the library. Um, and what it does is it's going to help us to better select and manage, um, select for our collections, manage our collections, and improve our collections. Um, it uses a really powerful methodology that's all based on data-driven um, statistics that library's been using for the last couple of decades, and it's going to help us um, look at historical and current information about our collection and how it's being used by our patrons, and it's going to help us to make a better collection and more effective a collection and to eliminate on waste. There's, um, there's a report that this um, software could do, and they, they lovingly call it dead on arrival. And what that means is when you purchase a book and it only gets checked out two times or less in the first 12 months that you have it. And we don't have the software yet, but I will be interested to see how many books we have dead on arrival. <laughs> I, I want it to be low, but I, um, I want to make it lower. So um, this is going to be a really great tool for us. Um, our collection um, development people are really excited about it. Um, it's going to help us save time. It's going to create, like I said, less waste. And it's going to make our books circulate a lot better. So we have um, committed to a three-year contract um, for this software. And in doing so, we got a really good discount on it at, um, compared to if we bought it on a year-per-year -year basis. So um, as soon as we uh, get it up and running, because we do have to import all of our library circulation and um, library collection into the software, so that requires a big file transfer protocol that is going on behind the scenes, and it takes a while for it to get set up so that it works correctly. Um, but once we get that set up and we start running some reports and seeing how things are doing, um, we can better look at what we're buying and buy things that are going to uh, be the best for our community. So I will let you know how that progresses. Does anybody have any questions on that? 
<clears throat> Will that include CDs and the DVDs that you have? Yes, it'll, it'll include everything in the library that is circulating. What will happen with all of the materials that are dead on arrival? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to take an effect, uh, into account, too. Um, the data they're mostly going to be looking at um, for us is the last year. And since we were in a pandemic year and our circulations were low anyway because of it, um, we're not going to get too hasty on, on doing anything with recently purchased materials. Um, we're also currently working on buying some new display furniture where we can have more of a bookstore feel in the library so we can do some face out um, marketing and merchandising. So we're hoping that too will help um, increase intention on different collections that sometimes don't get seen um, or just aren't as popular as others. So as we kind of work through these things, um, I think after a couple of years, we'll have a better idea of the materials that our clientele are looking for. Any other questions about collections? And okay, I got one last thing for you. Well, one more. One, one more question. Yep. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, on the Arizona room, you know, the one that has all the historical kind of things. Yes. Will that all be inventoried also, or is that going to be on a like a separate? separate inventory? Well, it, the Collection HQ isn't necessarily inventorying everything. It does have the ability to do that, but um, that is a special collection that is, we don't, we don't touch it. We actually, we want to add to it, and a lot of the things in there you can't get anymore. They're out of print. Well, so even if they're not circulating as much, it's because it's a very specialized collection for our area. So we're not going to do anything with that collection. It's going to be where it is. And the only thing we might do with it is just um, run some reports to see if anything is missing from that collection that, that we can look into um, getting other copies for if we can find them. Um, and, but and they're not checked out, though, right, Pam? They, they have some to... of them can be. Some oh. of them cannot. Mm -hmm. The ones that are in the locked case, those definitely cannot be checked out. They have to be looked at in the library only. And some of the ones that are on the shelves back there, too, are reference only, so they have to be used in the library. Mm -hmm. But we do have other um, materials back there that can be checked out. Okay. So you've already engaged in this three-year contract? Yes, it's already been approved, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Last piece of business for the uh, librarian's report tonight is um, it's almost the end of the fiscal year. I can't believe it's almost time to write another annual report. <laughs> <laughs> so the annual report um, will get approved, hopefully by you, in June. And we need to set up a date to have that special meeting for uh, approval of the annual report so that it can get to the council to be approved by them um, in the early part of July. So we like to do it later in the month if possible because of the fact that we're trying to get all of our statistics for the, for the whole year, um, as well as financial information for the year. Um, so the later we can go in June, the, the better our statistics and our numbers are. Um, our normal meeting would be on June 10th, and we may or may not have that meeting. Um, but regardless of if we have that meeting or not, we do need to have another meeting that month. Um, we normally have it also on a Thursday at the same time. So we're looking at June 17th or June 24th. Does the 24th make it better for you being later? Sorry. I'm sorry? Does the 24th make it better for you? Um, it could, and, and Aunt Sansi just pointed out to me that this is actually under new business, so I kind of jumped the gun. So we're going to, I'll let you sit on this for a couple minutes and think about your schedule, <laughs> and when we get to new business, then we can, you, we can have you uh, do a motion to select a date. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> and that's all I have for the librarian's report. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any old business?
okay? Under new business. <laughs> Well, you have one agenda item before that one. Okay, so we want to elect the vice president first? Yeah, let's okay. go ahead and do it in order. It looks good. <laughs> okay, we need to elect a vice president. I want to call for a motion to open the nomination. <clears throat> I'm going to nominate Pam? No, I just need a motion to oh, open the I'm nominee. sorry. <laughs> I'm jumping the gun, too, here. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to share. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's in the air, I think. Um, I'll make a motion that we open the... Um, uh, nomination. Nomination <laughs> to appoint a new vice president. Okay, do we have a second? Uh -huh. I second it. Okay. okay. A vote, please. Judy Bory. Yes. Samuel Graves? Yes. Pam Krause? Yes. Vivian Reisky? Yes. Vera Walters? Yes. Lori Wine? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, do we have any nominations for the vice chairperson? I will not nominate Pam Krause. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Do we have any nominations for vice? Pam's already I'm on the secretary. secretary. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. So you can't do I both, right? And void then, right? Yeah. So you I believe you can only hold one chair. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I nominate Vivian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to butcher your last name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rice ski. Rice likes to ski. Ms. Rice ski has been nominated. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can we have a roll call? Oh, now you're going to call for any other nominations. Okay. Do we have a nomination for vice president? Any others? Do we have a nomination for vice president? Do we have any other nominations for vice president? Can I have a motion to close the nominations? I move we close the nominations for vice president. I'll second that. <laughs> Judy Bory. We need a roll call vote. Yeah. <laughs> Judy Bory. Yes. Samuel Graves. Yes. Pam Krause. Yes. Vivian Reisky. Yes. Vera Walters. Yes. Lori Wine. Yes. Motion passes. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Do we have a motion to approve the first person nominated for vice chairperson? I move we approve the nomination for vice president. And I'll second that. Who second, Judy? Yes. Okay, we need a roll call. Judy Boring? Yes. Samuel Graves? Yes. Pam Krause? Yes. Vivian Reisky? Yes. Vera Walters? Yes. Lori Wine? Yes. Okay, motion passes. And you're done. I close the roll call, <laughs> and it appears that Ms. Reisky is our new vice president. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> that was only slightly painful. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. We need to set a date for our June special board meeting. Correct. And it looks as though the 17th or the 24th, is there any problem with those dates? And I think you have to do a motion on these ones as well. When we get to it or do we just? Somebody will need to make a motion for one of those dates, I believe. I move that we have a date and time for the 24th of June 2021 for the special board meeting to discuss and approve the library board annual report. I second that. Okay, can we have a roll call? Judy Bory? Yes. Samuel Graves? Yes. Pam Krause? Yes. Vivian Reisky? Yes. Vera Walters? Yes. Lori Wine? Yes. And it's passed for the 24th. Okay, June the 24th will be a special meeting to approve the annual report. What time do you? Yeah. 6.30. Also at 6.30. 6.30, yeah. Right here or? 
Mm -hmm. It'll be here, yes. The day before my birthday. Let's do this. Birthday <laughs> cake. <laughs> Okay. Uh, do we have any future agenda items? I have a question. Um, it's been asked of me frequently. Uh, when is the indoor playground going to be open for the public to use again? The one, the one outside of the library? No, the one inside where the kids, like the, the, castle. the castle. Oh, when the castle will be open? <laughs> yeah. I don't have a definitive date. I'm kind of just playing it day by day and assessing what's going on around us. Mm -hmm. um, my fear is that if we open the castle, it's it's going to be first of all difficult to to clean it, and I'm also uh, now that the weather's getting warmer and people looking to do more things inside. I'm a little nervous about the number of people it might bring into the into the building not that we I mean we've we've always we we've, we've had the capacity limit of approximately saying between 25 and 35 mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much where we've we've been pretty consistent with that in terms of how that's the amount of people we are getting in at any one time that or less um, so I don't have a clear answer um, and I have had people ask me as well. Um, I'm hoping that by the time we have summer reading that we'll have that open. Um, I just don't want to move too quickly with it. Fair enough. Good, very um, well. Mm -hmm. I just know with all that almost 100 degree weather we've already had. I know. <laughs> it's hot already. I know. It's like last summer all over again. Yes. Our winter was very short. Yesterday. It was. Winter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Any other, any requests for the future agenda items that you want us to consider? Just check with Park and Rec about doing a movie yeah. combined, mm -hmm. but. Okay. Any other future mm -hmm. agenda items? I don't think so. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I second. Yeah, you don't either. Oh. Oh, okay. She knows her stuff. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs>